Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> there is something that I've been saying on this platform as a joke, but it's the reality. Let me repeat it again. Unless a miracle is going to happen between now and 2027, William Ruto is going to be a one-term president. Of course, a miracle can happen. I'm saying this because the rate at which Kenya Kwanzaa are losing the grip of their stronghold is shocking. Yesterday, something happened in Akuro. William Ruto led uh, Kenya Kwanza brigades to some events in Akuro. Susan Keika was heckled, was booed, and was humiliated. Susan Keika could not even finish her speech. And of course, that was not the first time William Ruto was being humiliated by watching his allies being heckled. You saw it happened in Bomet. Uh, Your Excellency, the President, Kongoi Amun Kenyon Kesatul Raini, Kongoi Amun Imiga N Sotik Kogayanane, Kayago Mwa Chigole. Uh, of course, uh, it has been happening. Kepima Murkomen was cycled in Baringo. It has been happening. But the heckling of Susan Kihika in Akuru is what caught me by surprise. The truth of the matter is that Susan Kihika has been one of the most popular leaders from Kenya Kwanza. In fact, if you've been following the politics of Susan Kihika, from 2013, when she was elected as the Speaker of the County Assembly of Nakuru, to her election as the Senator for Nakuru, until she became the Governor, I can assure you, what happened yesterday is definitely going to shape the politics of Kenya Kwanza. Because there's no way Susan Keika can just come from being one of the most popular leaders to being heckled. Let me play for you a bit of Susan Keika's videos during the campaigns. Anaitwa Susan Keheka. Jameni watu wanakuru. Mutatupatia kura ya Susan Keheka. Awe governor wetu wanakuru. Ebu nione kura ya Susan Keheka, Susan Keheka. Mweshimiwa Deputy President, our incoming President. Nakuru County mulikuja hapa 10 years ago in 2013. Uhuru wakasema kumi yake na kumi ya ruto. Sasa on Tuesday, tunaenda kuburudisha mkono na kupatia na ile kumi ya ruto. And after the heckling, I saw several Kenya Kwanza supporters trying to justify that the video was not the actual video of what transpired on the ground. And then they started sharing this particular video. Ile housing project, mimi nilikuwa hapa last year. Iyo housing project tumemaliza. Na mimi ni narudi hapa nakuru. Kwa sababu hapa nakuru mpango yetu ni kikisha kwamba tunajenga nyumba elfu ishirini kwa hii nakuru county. Hapa hapa nakuru town. Tunaitaji nyumba elfu kumi na mimi nataka hawa bijana kwa sababu tunaitaji bijana karibu elfu ishirini wakufanya hiyo kazi. And William Ruto must fix it as a matter of agency. Failure to which one term is loading. The truth is, for me, I come from Kisumu. I used to travel a lot because previously I was in Nairobi. So I used to travel a lot between Nairobi to Kisumu. 2017, 2022. You would always tell that you are in Akuru during campaigns when you start meeting Susan Keka branded 
billboards, branded vehicles. You know, her campaign was just out of this world. Of course, even in 2022, it was the same. So Susan Kika has been very popular. In fact, at some point, personally, I thought that maybe Susan Kika was going to be the future of the mountain. But that's not the case. The residents are rejecting Susan Kika. The question is, what is really happening? In this video, I want to try and analyze what's really happening to Kenya Kwanzaa. Before we do that, for those who are watching this channel for the first time, please take a second or two, click that subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support because without that support, this channel cannot be where it is. Ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, allow me to dive in. Ladies and gentlemen, something is happening to Kenya Kwanzaa. And unless a miracle is going to happen, William Ruto is in big trouble. The truth is, the mountain really supported William Ruto. And the moment you remove the mountain from William Ruto's equation, I don't think William Ruto will have any future. And of course, William Ruto being the president, he enjoys the privilege of getting intelligence briefing. And I'm convinced that William Ruto has already received the intelligence briefing that the mountain is not doing well for him. And that can explain why William Ruto tried to shift to, to Western Kenya. But Western Kenya is also not receptive. And if you are keen, in the last two or three weeks, William Ruto is camping either in Rift Valley or Mount Kenya. Why do you think he's doing that? William Ruto is doing that because he has realized that he's losing the grip of those strongholds. But indeed, he needs those strongholds. For him to succeed again. That's why you'll see William Ruto going to Western Kenya. I mean, William Ruto going to Rift Valley and going to Mount Kenya. Just to try and consolidate those strongholds. Because there's another wave that is trying to sweep Mount Kenya. I was watching a video. And in that video, the member of parliament for Gatanga was really attacking Rigadi Gashagwa. And he warned William Ruto against going with Rigadi Gashagwa to the area. And I was wondering, why would that happen? What is happening? In fact, the guy was supporting Dindi Joro. So it means in uh, Mount Kenya, there's already division. And of course, in politics, nothing happens out of mere coincidence. It could be that William Ruto is the one who is trying to engineer those divisions so that the, the, the mountain is not united. But what happened in Nakuru, a 100% sure, shocked even William Samoy Araputo. What is really happening? Number one, from what I'm seeing, the trend, it is clear that William Ruto troops have lost the ground. Most of them are losing the ground. And that can explain why in Bomet, in Bomet, for example, Davis Chirchir was heckled. You know, that's a cabinet minister who is not even a member of parliament. Why would he be heckled in the presence of the deputy president? He was in his own county. The troops are losing the ground. Susan Kika being heckled in Nakuru, loudly like that. You know, there could be mamas, which is normal, but being heckled loudly like that, she's losing the ground. So the question which they should ask themselves is why are the troops losing the ground? I've, I, I once opined on this platform that the heckling that started, <clears throat> and we've been seeing it, in Mombasa, it went to somewhere in um, in Kikuyu where the people just let Ruto move. You know, Ruto was in Nyahururu, people ignored. I stated that those were just the beginning. That it was going to have some kind of spiral effect. So that tomorrow, Ruto will go to another place and they'll say, okay, for us, we were not heckling the president. We are heckling this particular individual. And it will continue like that. So the thing is, majority of William Ruto's troops have lost the ground. And that's why we are seeing the heckling going on. Number two, and this is the reality. Kenya Kwanzaa is likely to be a one-term presidency. Because already there's growing rebellion against Kenya Kwanzaa. So people are rebelling against Kenya Kwanzaa. But they, want, they don't want to show it to Ruto. 
So the biggest question is why do you think Kenyans are rebelling against Kenya Kwanza? Not Kenyans really. Let me just be very specific. The mountain. Why do you think the mountain is rebelling against Kenya Kwanza? Because even in Nakuru, you could tell that when Ruto was in Kerusoi, Kerusoi, things were just okay. The crowd was okay. Remember when he was being rendered, the crowd was just okay. But in Bondani, something was else was happening. So it means there is uh, a growing rebellion against Kenya Kwanza, especially amongst the Kikuyu. Why do you think that's happening? The truth is probably they've realized that they were conned, that they were lied to. Maybe the promises they were made are not being met. So for me, that's something that William Ruto will have to deal with. Number three, clearly there's a disconnect between Kenya Kwanza and the voters. And it's going to take them a long time. You know, I've been listening to William Ruto's speeches of late. And I've been wondering what's happening or what has happened to Ruto. Number one, William Ruto is still campaigning. He's on campaign mode. Who told him Kenyans are happy with that? He needs to figure out that Kenyans are not happy with the fact that he's still campaigning. Kenyans need services. But even if you leave that, for you to understand that is a, a disconnect, William Ruto was in Akuru, Susan Kika was in Akuru. What were they talking about? What were they telling the residents there? They were telling the residents about Barabara. They were telling the residents about Mbegu. They were telling the residents about affordable housing. They were telling the residents about Raila Ruto. They were telling the residents about judiciary. We are in January. Parents just escorted their children to school. For months are reporting. Why are you telling them about Mbegu? Why are you telling them about affordable housing? That's all their basic needs. So I think William Ruto has lost communication or maybe he has lost touch with the what the ordinary Kenyan are asking. Kenyans are not asking for more. They just want basic things. They want their, their, their they want to have something in their stomach. They want to take their kids to school. So if William Ruto could be addressing those issues, I don't think people like Susan Kehika would be heckled. The truth is these guys are heckling William Ruto in quotes but hiding behind Susan Kehika. People like Susan Kehika or even, uh, even uh, Davis Chirchir. Number four, <laughs> and this is very unfortunate for Kenya Kwanza. They don't have agenda to tell Kenyans. Now, during campaigns, what was Susan Kehika's main message? Yeah? Susan Kika's main message was simple. Uhuru, Raila, Azimio, blah. What was William Ruto's main message during campaigns? So if you used to tell something to the people and the people used to get excited by whatever you are telling them, then that thing now become irrelevant because they can no longer invoke the name of Uhuru, they can no longer invoke the name of Raila. What do you expect? So either the residents you'll be talking and the residents will just be looking at you like this or they'll get angry and now demand the real things. And of course, and of course, lastly, Kenyans are very bitter. Kenyans are very bitter with Kenya Kwanza, especially those who voted for Kenya Kwanza. They're very bitter because they think they were conned. Promises, nothing. The hustlers, the economy is just so bad. Everything is being increased. So Kenyans are very bitter. The truth is, as we speak, if you meet any Kenyan on the street, they are very bitter. And they are very angry. So they just want something to provoke them. I'm sure even these people, some of them were just, they just found themselves heckling Susan Keika. So I don't know what to think, but unless something is going to be done, William Ruto is going to be a one-term president. Lima Queen, bye-bye.